raspberry leaf. It's a uterine tonic. It brings blood to the area. It, yeah. it's, it's a organ specific remedy, you know? Yeah. And I think they're really useful to look out for, you know, like your lung specific entities, like remedies, like your Ellie campaign and yeah. you know, things like that. Like you, you have, if you have an organ specific remedy, it's just yeah. generally for that organ. And that's what raspberry leaf is. It's a uterine herb. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's specific to the uterus. So it brings blood to the area, it brings vitality to the area. Um, it uh, just as an aside, I also use it for excessive uterine bleeding. I find it really helpful, mm -hmm. interestingly, because yeah. it helps the organ work well. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists, and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. And today I've got David Castellan, who is the president of the NHAA. Um, but he also, or and he also, runs his own practice in Brisbane. And he spends a lot of time working with people with anxiety and depression and gut issues. But one of his major passions uh, is herbs in pregnancy so I thought we'd have a chat with David today and find out because there's a lot of discussion about what you can and can't take what herbs you can and can't take in pregnancy and um and of course there's raspberry leaf everyone loves a bit of raspberry leaf and there's oh can you take it in the first trimester can you, la, 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 la. you know slippery arm all of the things so I thought well let's have a chat with someone who actually knows about his herbs and for the practitioners out there who get questioned all the time about herbs in pregnancy this is going to be a really good one for you so David, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Geraldine. Lovely to, lovely to talk to you. <laughs> it's and great hello, everyone. <laughs> so, raspberry leaf. Tell us a bit about raspberry leaf because, I mean, we all want to use it. It's, you know, world, all over the world, tea bags. You know, I actually have a box of tea bags in my cupboard that I haven't opened because, strangely, I'm not pregnant. But also, you know, I've got so much other herbal tea, but I know it's sitting there. But Raspberry leaf, how often do we give it and why would we give it? What's the, what's the gin? What's the goss? Yeah, I think, I think that it's, uh, it, it, um, it's so terribly misunderstood these days, which is, um, I think, very sad. Um, I remember as uh, in, the, in the years coming out, um, once, once I did start practice, um, in the years before um, the turn of the century, actually. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> you have been in practice three yeah, decades, like, we just worked before, out. Before the turn of the century. Uh, <laughs> so um, in the years before uh, then, um, <laughs> uh, we would use raspberry leaf for, it's one of its main indicators was for morning sickness. Right. So it's a, it, and it's incredibly effective for morning sickness, really, really useful. Um, and so for to use it in morning sickness, you need to use it in the beginning. You know, you need to use it um, from the moment, you know, you're pregnant, really, you, is when you, you know, very soon after that, you've got trouble with morning sickness often. And uh, it's one of the best herbs for morning sickness that I know. Okay. And so we were using that um, really um, comfortably. Um, I was using it, you know, regularly and comfortably um and then sometime in the early 2000s i um prescribed it to someone and and she looked at me as if i just sort of landed from mars and she said you know of course you know that's contraindicated in pregnancy and i was like what <laughs> what <laughs> what no of course it's not it's like what this is the most <laughs> ridiculous thing i'd ever heard um but of course some pharmacist had um decided that Oh, raspberry leaf is listed as a uterine tonic. Well, of course, that's obviously going to cause unwanted spasm. Um, it's also listed as a partis preparata. Well, in pharmacy, a partis preparata brings on labour. Um, in herbal medicine, a partis preparata prepares you for birth. Yeah. It doesn't, there's nothing in there that says when it prepares you for birth. And raspberry leaf is the ultimate partis preparata because it prepares you right from the beginning. <clears throat> so while it's a uterine tonic, 
it doesn't increase tone. It actually relaxes the uterus. Right. We know, and, and so that's the opposite of what you would mm. in the pharmacy expects because they hear the word tonic, tone, increased tone, oh my God. Um, but uh, so some nice person's gone and tested it on rat uterus, oh. uterus tissue, yes, and it causes relaxation of relax of uterine tissue, not spasm. Um, so it confirms our use where it actually helps things relax and allows for, you know, the space for the pregnancy and, and even even in some of the the times where they've used raspberry just in the last trimester um the people who took rise relief they went they were more likely to go to term yep. so they were less likely to come early and less likely to go late right which is really fascinating right that yeah. was just using it in the last trimester yeah. um so it helps helps you go to the, the right amount of time so it doesn't bring it early doesn't make it go late etc which is great um it's it's relaxing to the uterus rather than spasming um and so it just prepares it prepares you for for birth which is, which is wonderful so i but you know i got spooked i, was, I got spooked and i got, ran away from it and like oh my god i best not take oh, ah, what am i doing yeah. so you know i i turned to ginger and meadowsweet so i would use a combination of ginger and meadowsweet yeah. Um, interestingly, down the line, I find that meadow sweet's actually a B3, you know, so mm. it's really less safe than raspberry leaf. But I was mm. pushed to that because I was like, oh, I can't use raspberry leaf because someone somewhere has said that it's not okay, you know. And yeah. it wasn't until, you know, probably the end of the 2000s, um, working with a, a really good um, practitioner friend of mine, Dana Bowman, Mm -hmm. um and we were sort of talking like this is ridiculous she said no i've been using it for years this is ridiculous so um i um remember the time i i decided to use it again with yeah. um, a pregnant lady i remember that i remember that situation really clearly yeah and uh, this particular client she'd been a client of mine for a while um she was a psychologist herself mm -hmm. um and she'd come to me with sort of like um depression type symptoms but in the end, we worked out that she had subclinical hypothyroid, which was interesting. Oh. And fixing that made a lot of things yeah. better. Um, <clears throat> so we had this good working relationship together and she got pregnant and she came to me. I was probably about six weeks and like, oh, my God, I'm so sick, you know, yeah. and sick and painfully sick you know oh, horrible. really yeah. really really struggling and so we had this conversation like look you know i've used rice relief i did use it for years it was very comfortable with it there's been all this schmozzle about it but yeah. i actually think we really should try it you know yeah. um and uh, <clears throat> anyway we had a good history she was confident to go with yeah. what i was had said and she's like yep okay let's do that mm. so i prescribed her some rice relief and um, how I prescribe it now for everyone, which is yep. just the 35 mil a week of the extract, which is two and a half mil twice a day, half a teaspoon. Yep. Um, and in fact, I think it's a lot easier to get half a teaspoon down um, twice a day than a couple of cups. So, you yep. know, um, <laughs> probably the reason, one of the reasons I use the extract rather than the tea. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is raspberry relief is very strong in tannin. So um, if you're drinking cups of raspberry relief tea all day, you're potentially binding your iron, um, oh, which is not really what you want to do. No. So um, I quite like the extract for a few reasons. Anyway, mm. um, I'm talking fast because I'm excited because I, I love... <laughs> So I'm all good. It means people don't um, have to turn up the speed on the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the um, uh, prescribed her this and she t she sent me a text the next morning at 6am and she said, Dave, it's gone. Okay. And, um, and it, she did not have morning sickness at all, right. the remainder of her pregnancy. Yeah. So, um, you know, I remember that so clearly. I'm so yeah. glad I went back to that. Yeah. I remember the, the time she got pregnant the second time. The first thing she did was call me and go, ah, when could I come in? Because I need some raspberry leaf extract. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so then I started using it more and more mm. um, and, you know, regaining my, regaining my power, I guess, regaining yeah. confidence with it. And then... Um, 
another client quite a few years later, would be at least 10 years later, uh, she was, she'd been, again, a client of mine for a long time, um, sort of helped her mm. through her PhD, a lot of, lot of nerve work, et cetera, a lot yeah. of repair after she finished. I yeah. should listened to her and not done mine. But anyway, yeah. I'm in the middle of mine, so I just keep going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's all you do. You're in no, the middle no, of mine, I, keep going. <laughs> I, I think the best advice is just don't start the PhD. That, that's the best advice, yes. Yeah. That's the best advice, yes. <laughs> Um, it's the advice I'd give anyone, um, but nevertheless, when you're in the middle of it, you just sort of got to get out of it somehow and keep going. Got to keep going. Um, yep. So um, anyway, a lot of repair afterwards, and then and then she uh, decided that oh, okay, it's time to be mum. Yeah. Um, and she didn't no partner around, so she was going to do IVF. She was about forty, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's like, oh, you know. She actually came to me after she'd been to her first gynae appointment and um, she'd been on the pill for 20 years. <clears throat> um, so she'd had a, histos a histoscopy, mm -hmm. had a look in with a camera, had a look inside and she said, oh, no, the, um, the uh, outcome of that was um, the gynae said, uh, oh, I'm sorry, there hasn't been much love here. Um, <laughs> she's like, she's like, what's it take her in the bedside manner? Um, but, um, you know, she's also, what can I do? You know, what can I do here? So, like, oh, well, you know, we had a really good chat about it. And um, I didn't want to interfere with any of the hormones that she was going to be taking. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I said, I think we should use raspberry leaf because mm -hmm. it's a uterine tonic. It brings blood to the area. It, yeah. it's, it's a organ specific remedy. You know, yeah. and I think they're really useful to look out for, you know, like your lung specific entities, like remedies, like your Ellie campaign and yeah. you know, things like that. Like you, you have, if you have an organ specific remedy, it's just yeah. generally for that organ. And that's what raspberry leaf is. It's a uterine herb. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's specific to the uterus. So it brings blood to the area, it brings vitality to the area. Um, it uh, just as an aside, I also use it for excessive uterine bleeding. I find it really helpful, mm -hmm. interestingly, because yeah. it helps the organ work well. Yeah. Um, so um, we talked through raspberry leaf, and she's like, "Yep, I'm going to give it a go." Um, she did same thing, two and a half mil twice a day, <laughs> uh, so half a teaspoon twice a day. Yeah. That's all. And um, she went and had another cystoscopy three weeks later. Right. And yep, three weeks later, she had a second one with a different gynae, mind you. Right. I mean, it's surprising considering the bedside manner, lack of. Yeah, I, I'd um, try someone else. Yeah, that's right. So oh. she did. And, um, but she, she again, she sent me a message and uh, she said, she said David, um, I've just had the most amazing compliments on my uterine lining. <laughs> Do you think it could be the raspberry leaf? <laughs> And I was like, oh, oh perfect. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. So you're so, doing two and a half mils twice yeah, a day yeah. through the whole pregnancy from beginning to pregnancy. end. Yes, including, then, including the six weeks after. Including the six weeks it after. It puts everything back. Yeah, puts Brings everything, everything back. back together, you know. So, so yes, all the way through. And you don't, you don't need to increase at the end. No. The one thing you don't use it for mm -hmm. is to bring on labour. Oh, well, it wouldn't be done anyway. Well, this is the thing. It's often, so often, people are sent in the health food shops for raspberry leaf to bring on their labour. And it's a big problem because people will take raspberry leaf, think it'll bring on their labour, and, of course, it does nothing because it doesn't bring on labour, you see? No. So it's being used. It's being totally misunderstood. Yeah. Which is why I, 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 I like talking about raspberry leaf and I like being really you know, clear about yep. how we under, how herbalists understand mm. raspberry leaf. Because, yeah. you know, if you take a, a pharmaceutical approach to it, yeah. um, you don't understand our herbs, you know, and that's the problem. You know, don't, you don't actually need to know anything about herbs to make mm. pronouncements about them, which is a shame, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, like there, you know, pharmacist goes, oh, you know, it's a uterine tonic. Well, obviously, it's yep. going to cause uterine sp spasm. It's a part of preparata. Oh my God, it's obviously going to bring on labor. Yeah. It doesn't do either, you know, no. because they don't understand the herbs. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important to, you know, feel more empowered 
about yeah. you know with our traditional use of these herbs yeah. how they were used you know yeah it's very much the traditional use when i was in penang mm. a very long time ago mm. a very very long time well obviously nobody can travel at the moment but a yeah. longer ago than that um, actually we'll all be back people will be back traveling by the time this is published so hopefully anyway fingers mm. crossed they'll be back yeah. traveling. um but I was in Penang and I was with my then boyfriend, now husband, and the, the people would come around offering you a massage on the beach. And this one, I was like, yeah, okay, great. And then um, she said, oh, you've got, so she's massaging me. She goes, you've got good hips. You'll have good babies. And um, I said, oh, not there yet, love. <laughs> He's the boyfriend. <laughs> Give us a minute, dearie. And, um, and then she said, you must have raspberry leaf all the time, all the time. And I said, because mm. I wasn't. Uh, herbal. I was a nurse then. I had no herbal knowledge. I had no naturopathic knowledge at all. Mm. But I had heard, you know, all of these things about raspberry leaf in the last trimester only because I'd done mm. my mm. midwifery training. And so it was last trimester for raspberry leaf. And I said, oh, you just had that at the last part. She said, no, 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 no. All the time, all the time. Before you have the babies, you start mm. on the raspberry leaf. You have it. You have the whole raspberry leaf. You make sure you make the tea. You make the tea. And I was just like looking at it going, okay, whatever you say, love. And I obviously, I did have it for the last trimester because that was the thing when I was pregnant, it was just mm. the last trimester and it was the tea. Mm. And um, so, but I still think back to that lady on the beach mm. <laughs> saying, no, no, the whole time, the whole time, you must have the whole time. And I was like, yeah, but it's traditional use, isn't it? So there they were mm. in Penang, obviously mm. drinking it yeah. the whole pregnancy the whole as pregnancy. normal. Yeah, exactly. And here we are. Oh, no, no, no. You can only have mm. it last trimester. You can only have it for this bit. You can only mm. have it for that bit. And yet exactly. traditionally around the world, it is still the whole pregnancy. Mm. Yep. And so, I mean, it's a wonderful herb. And you know, 2.5 mils twice a day means you can literally sell them a bottle with a big label on it. Precisely, yeah. Yeah, it, it's yeah. so simple, you know. Yeah. It's such a simple treatment. It's such yeah. a simple supporting thing you yeah. know, that you can do. Um, and, you know, I like it for the people who are um, wanting to, you know, trying to assist yeah. with their fertility because it brings blood to the area, nourishes the organ, you know, all of those wonderful things that you want to happen yeah. without worrying about are you interfering with the, whatever treatment's happening? Are you, you know, changing this hormone or that hormone? You don't have to worry about that. You're just supporting the organ, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I just... I, absolutely love rice relief and such a simple herb yeah. uh, simple and effective and you know I, I like to talk about it too so that people don't miss out on this mm. wonderful support that they can get you know That's simple easy mm. wonderful support that they can get and they don't have to drink bucket loads of tea although the tea isn't that bad um not, i mean i that exactly it's no just, when i when i drink rice relief tea i tend to put fresh ginger in it and mm. just break it up a bit mm. that's right okay change yeah. it up a bit don't you know um the people who are on the tea i will often say either the ginger with it or if they've got indigestion put some peppermint with it mm. and put, mix, yeah. mix your bags yeah you know make that's a pot mix your bags that's what i always say so mm. you know mix it up mm. make your own tea but um that's absolutely mm. brilliant to know even more about raspberry leaf tea and we can really get it mm. out there that just a bottle for the whole pregnancy is the way to go Yes. 2.5 yeah. mils twice a day of the tincture prescribed by a herbalist. Yes. Uh, go, and right. your, go, go and see your herbalist. Exactly. <laughs> go and see your herbalist. Exactly. So, what, you know, the, yeah. what's right and what's not. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So I will leave it there for today. Thank yep. you so much, David. And I'd like to have you back again, if that would be all right with you. Oh, You've been be on great. before. Yeah. And I absolutely love having you on the cast. So um, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.